Dependable, reliable God. Dependable, reliable God. You will do as you say. You are worthy to be praised. Dependable, reliable God. You will do as you say. You are worthy to be praised. Dependable, reliable God. We depend on you, dependable, reliable God. Dependable, reliable God. You will do as you say. You are worthy to be praised. Dependable, reliable God. You will do as you say. You are worthy to be praised. Dependable, reliable God. Dependable, reliable God, you are dependable, reliable God. You will do as you say, you are worthy to be praised. Dependable, reliable God, you will do as you say, you are worthy to be praised. Dependable, reliable God, we depend on you. Dependable, reliable God. Dependable, reliable God, you will do as you say, you are worthy to be praised. You are dependable, reliable God, you always do as you say, you are worthy to be praised. Dependable, reliable God, unchangeable, unchangeable God, unchangeable, unshakable God. You always do as you say, you are worthy to be praised. Unchangeable, unshakable God. You will do as you say, you are worthy to be praised. Unchangeable, unshakable God. We depend on you, dependable, reliable God. Eh? Unshakable, unchangeable God. You always do as you say, you are worthy to be praised. Reliable, dependable God, you always do as you say, you are worthy to be praised, unchangeable, unshakable God. Yes, our God is an amazing God. He always does what he says. He always does as he promises. Oh my God, the woman of God on fire is here. Pastor Mrs. is in the building. Welcome, Mom Grizel. Inspire Grisel is in the house, people. I actually saw a notification yesterday. Was I mistaken? I kind of saw a notification. No, not yesterday. Today. Did you go live yesterday or when? See, I've not gone to my notifications for the past. I don't know how many. Like, I just have lots and lots of things in my notification. But I think today I kind of scrolled through a little bit. And I saw a notification from you. I don't know if you went live. Yeah you did so i have to go search it out and i would have to post it on my on my wall so people can get to be blessed i've been talking about it on some fridays not every friday some days i actually forget but sometimes i always remember i'm like oh people should go there and find out if you're still there and if i go and i see you're there i'll get to share and all that stuff but sometimes this week no this month practically no what am i talking about the last two months have been marathon it has been a marathon from giving the students their midterms giving them scores giving them tests and all those kinds of things and then in that same month giving them finals giving them test scores man we've been feeling results in since 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 so i can say since february like the start of february till like now we have been on this whole feeling results giving people this giving them scores trying to edit it try to correct it because some people are complaining they don't have scores. Some students are not. Man, it has been marathon, but God is keeping us all the same. Uh, I, would, I, would, I would rather say I'm grateful that God has still given me a job because some people don't have their jobs. But yes, testimony time. Before we get on with the chapter already, I just cannot keep this. I can't stay silent about this. Welcome, Mom Balora. Hope you're good. Hope you're doing great. It's been a while as well. We've missed you all on a chapter already. Thank you for coming today. Please don't forget to share us out so a lot more people can come in and get to have a swell time with us today. So let me tell you guys my testimony is actually big. 
it, it might be big for me, but just normal for some other person, but it's big for me. It's really big. So I've been doing a chapter a day and of course I make this audio Bibles and I put them on my YouTube channel, but I know that YouTube is not really accessible for everybody. A lot of people kind of cannot afford as much data to get on YouTube as they would on Facebook and other social media platforms. So I've been thinking about how to edit these videos and put them on social media and all that on other social media platforms aside from YouTube, but I've really not gotten away. So at some point I decided I was going to start putting it on TikTok, you know, um, having the high, having the, 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 the idea that TikTok has up to five minutes. So I was very excited. And then I got to realize that there are lots of my videos that are like five minutes, one second, five minutes, seven seconds and all that. So I really started praying. And I was telling God that I really desire that people should listen to the word of God. And I know that it would be a little bit distracting for someone to have to go from a part A to a part B to have to listen to a message. And the back issue was I didn't want to go and be cutting those videos. That was the truth. So I started uploading um, Genesis on on TikTok and I uploaded and uploaded. I looked at it for a while. It's like people are not viewing it. I'm like, I don't care. Maybe the people that are going to watch this thing are going to be sometime in old, old, olden days. All is that the Bible is right on there for them to listen. So I started putting it and all of them were below five minutes. They were below five minutes. I was really telling God, I'm like, Lord, please increase this thing to maybe like 10 minutes. That would really be good. And so I, I got on, um, started putting it on. I was putting on all the videos and putting on all the videos. So I got to like chapter 17. I think chapter 18 and 19 were five minutes and upwards. So uh, I stopped. When I stopped, I said I was going to do it the next day. The next day, I didn't do it. <laughs> I was still trying to figure out in my head how I'm going to start doing these things. I couldn't do it. So I think for about two or three days, I didn't upload any videos on TikTok. So yesterday, I felt embarrassed and ashamed. I decided that I should not procrastinate this thing. It's just not going to do nothing. Let me get on and start creating these videos while I'm trusting God and hoping in faith that he gets to answer my prayer. So I go on and I'm cutting the videos in twos and cutting the videos in twos and pop, 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 pop. I was cutting. I started cutting and uploading, cutting and uploading. I said, because I don't want to make excuses anymore. So I was cutting and uploading. I got to find out that just in Genesis, I had to cut like 16 videos. That is much people. It's not funny. So I started creating and uploading, creating and uploading. All of a sudden, I got a message in my inbox. So I was freaking out because there was a time ago I was actually uploading. I've actually, I actually have a certain YouTube channel that I just upload my videos since I actually had my hard disk and my computer hard drive destroyed and spoiled some time ago. So now I'm very, very cautious. I'm very careful. So I kind of upload when I record a video, I just upload it on YouTube. So there's a channel that I upload it on. So since that channel is not very active, I think I have a limit of how many videos I can upload in a day so that they are uploaded about maybe 15 or so. And then they blocked me out and said, I cannot upload videos. I've reached my maximum limit of up uploading videos that day. So I can't upload anymore. So when I saw a message on TikTok, I thought it was probably the same thing because I'd uploaded close to like 16 or 20 videos that day but now it wasn't 20 like i've uploaded 20 chapters it was because i was cutting some of them in two some of them in threes so i i didn't look at the message you see god has already given me the answer but i didn't take it so i kept doing going going and going and going and then later and i was like what's the worst that can happen let me just go ahead and check the message people of god you ain't gonna believe it just hours after I started uploading, it showed that they had even done it before, but I saw the message late or my message came late. They've updated. And now on TikTok, you can post videos up to 10 minutes. I was so excited. People have got, I could not wait to give you guys this testimony. It's so, so my thing It's so for me, like they say God can break protocols. I know that this is just God showing me even not just for TikTok, but for other things. And you know what? Yeah, like humans that we are. I kind of realized that there are also some videos that are like 12 minutes long and all that. So now I'm telling God for a 15 minutes push. 
because I know, like I know that um, script, um, verses like chapters like Psalms 119 is definitely going to be like 15 minutes or more. So maybe I should just push for 20 minutes. Lord, please, the next time that they're coming up with this thing, they're just going to double it again. Just like the double from 5 to 10, let them double for 10 to 20. So I know that every single chapter of the Bible is going to go under fully. Thank you, Lord, for answering my prayer. I'm very, very grateful. To some people, you might just be like, oh, yeah, TikTok is just testing and testing and testing and they see that it's good and some people can go on so they just know. But God actually did this one for me. I know that. Like, I know like I know. <laughs> I don't care how other people see, but that's how I see it. I really, really prayed to God and I asked him. I was really, really earnest and I really wanted him to do this for me. And he did it for me. <sighs> he do one for me. Yes, he do one for me. If you ask him, he go do one for you. Oh, big team, big team, where God do one for me. <laughs> big team, big team, where God do one for me. He give me TikTok and he add my time. He make possible, make a post video. <laughs> he bought up my bread on TikTok. So I'm really, really excited. Thank you all so much for always coming through and encouraging me as well. That also gives me the push and the faith to be able to keep doing this thing and not giving up on it because it is what god wanted me to do so of course he had to see through he had to see me through he was backing me up and he has been backing me up so far and i'm really really grateful so he has given me an option to be able to post this on facebook and to be able to also post this on tiktok so i'm excited we're looking forward to i don't know if i should post it between my videos on um instagram i'm still to figure that out yet or I should create a new, a totally new Instagram channel that is just for the scripture. I don't know yet. I'm still trying to figure out. And I know that Instagram also the maximum, I think the maximum is 15 minutes. I think that one is 15 minutes for videos. So I'm still looking forward to seeing what he would want me to do. If I'm supposed to post it on my Instagram directly, or I'm supposed to create a new Instagram channel. So thank you all so, so very much. I had to create a new TikTok for that. I had to create a new um, YouTube channel for the Bible. I had to also, I think I might end up creating a new um, Instagram for the Bible. It's just the Bible channel. So yes, that's it. That's my testimony for today. Thank you all so much. Hi, Miss Jenny. Thank you for coming. God bless you. So let's pray and hand over the session to God, get to the birthday party and then the Bible party. And I'm extra super excited because we're done with six books of the Old Testament. We're done with the entire New Testament. We're done with six books of the Old Testament. And now we're going to the five books, sorry. And now we're going to the seed book of the Old Testament, which is the book of Joshua. I'm excited. I don't know who's with me, but you better be with me because I'm with God. <laughs> so if you're with me, you're with God too. Okay, so let's pray. Father, we thank you for this beautiful day you've made. We rejoice and be glad in you. We thank you for your goodness, for your loving kindness, for your faithfulness, for your tender mercies. We thank you for protection, provision. We thank you for guidance. We thank you for all the amazing things that you're doing in our lives. We thank you for all the things you've done for us that you're doing and you're still to do, O oh Lord. Father, we just bless your holy name. We magnify you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the thanks and adoration because you deserve it. Blessed be your holy name in all the earth. Take preeminence, oh Father. We thank you for all the amazing things you've done for us. We thank you for adding the time, for answering my prayer and adding the time on TikTok, oh Lord, so that people can be able to listen to the Bible and listen to it fully. Lord, we're still praying and desiring that you should add the time some more and some more so that we can put up all the chapters of the Bible on there and people are going to be blessed while they read the word of god or while they listen to the word of god thank you king of glory because i know you always hear an answer speak to us today in a very special way we've come to dine again and sup at your table we know that you're going to bless us with your choicest of blessings lord increase while i decrease so it's going to be you and you alone that will be seen felt and heard throughout this session of a chapter a day take preeminence but now and forevermore for in jesus mighty and blessed name we pray with thanksgiving Amen. Amen, people. Welcome, Mom T. Pamelvis. Oh, my God. You were so hot on your picture. Happy Mother's Day. You know, I was freaking out like, how could it be Mother's Day? Then I didn't know about it. Well, it's always not the same for every country. I think it wasn't here in 
Thailand. So that's why I was confused. Okay, so let's go, let's go, let's go. Everything that word, everything that is was in God, says Dr. Miles Monroe. And then this other one says, learn how to trust your intuition, keep your dreams, your dis um, disrupt your standards, be confident to achieve your, to achieve. Oh, let me take that again. Sorry, people. Learn how to trust your intuition. Keep your dreams your priority. Disrupt your standards. Be confident to achieve. I like that. Disrupt your standards. That one is not easy because there's some times that we have some really lazy standards and we're not ready to disrupt them to get to do things that God wants us to do. We have to get out of the place of, we have to get out of our comfort zone sometimes to be able to sign and stand out and do what God really desires that we should do. So it's birthday party time. Let's get the people who are in the birthday book. The first person is Mom Angel Nehinala. Mom Angel Nehinala is actually my younger brother's friend. I got to know her to my younger brother. We actually worked together in an NGO that was run by my key brother as well. And she's a very nice person very god loving she loves god with a passion and she's very business oriented she's a virtuous woman at it she's really really an amazing person a sweet soul i remember we had an outing together some time ago when i i i think i traveled and i just came back and we had this really great time together they took me places i went to boya actually i think did i stay with them no we actually went out together but i didn't leave with them I was leaving at my auntie's house or my friend's house. I think I was leaving at my friend's house, my best friend's house. So <laughs> sometimes when I go to some places, I have problems with where to leave because everybody expects me to leave with them. So I just kind of choose one really far, far away person and just go and leave with that person. <laughs> really, Mr. Eddie Chair? Are you kidding me? You're the one who has been missing. So you better come and report yourself right now. Don't say that. I've been here all along. I've been here since January 1st, 2021. I've been here every single day. No, I've missed three days. I actually missed three days, but I've been here every single day. So you're the one who has been missing. So come and report yourself. Where have you been? <laughs> Even on your birthday, I sent you a birthday message. I didn't see a reply. I thought you had gotten off Facebook. Hope you're good. Hope you're fine. Okay, so that's Mom Angel Nehinala for you. Um, she made me have a swell time when I was in Boya. She and her kid sister, they're really amazing. She sings as well. And she loves to dance too. So, happy birthday to you, Mom Angel. And then the next person is Mom Judith Fonyam. Mom Judith Fonyam, uh, we actually, I got, actually got to know her on Facebook. I'd known her already, um, but we're not that really close. But then we got connected on Facebook and she has she has this really great group where they post a lot of things that inspires you, that gets to bless you, that can get you grow in the faith and all that. That's mom, um, Judith for you. So thank you very much, Ma, for all the amazing job that you're doing and for the group that you created. We really, really do appreciate you and all the work that you're doing. We pray that God blesses you very specially. And then the next person that we have is Mom Esty Blackie. We actually met on um, a group on WhatsApp called Relationship Craze. I actually joined that group because uh, we I met with a leader on one of the seminars that we had on WhatsApp, and I decided to connect with him. And he was a very great person. And then he told me there's this group where they talk about relationships, especially young people, what we go through, the realities we face, and how we. We kind of resolve them so we kind of tell each other i went through this and this and this this is how i resolved it and then we also bring um a lot of relationship stuff into the group so we can learn and grow we don't just want to be christians and then we don't have a social life a social life is important god desires that we have a social life please <laughs> so let's not get all godly and then forget to be sociable as well God himself was sociable. If not, he would not be able to communicate to the people that he was communicating to. Okay, so that's where I met Mom Esti Blackie, and she's an amazing person. She's also a blessing to us. She also um, 
has a lord that she always brings to the group and i'm really grateful to her for that happy birthday to you so let's take that again happy birthday mom angel nehinala happy birthday mom judy fonya happy birthday mom esti blackie thank you all for being your amazing self keep up the good work and god bless you so let's pray for the birthday people and ride on to the bible party like i said it's joshua we're starting the new book today joshua chapter 1 has 18 verses and that's going to be quite a short read and i'm really excited i can't wait to start it on but first let's pray for the birthday people Lord, we thank you for all these amazing people who are born today, not just the ones who've called their names, but every single person who was born on this 28th day of March. Father, I pray, O oh God, that you're going to bless them with your choices of blessings. Open the windows of heaven upon their lives and rebuke every devourer in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you cause them to increase in wisdom and stature, gaining favor before God and before men, O oh Lord. Let their gifts make a way for them, causing them to stand before before kings not before me men cause them to shine brighter and brighter onto the perfect day it's your word and we know your word is true your word is here and amen your word never fails it always accomplishes the purpose for which it is sent so lord we say thank you father we bring before you all these amazing people oh lord we pray oh god that you're going to do for them that which only you can do Father, I pray, O oh God, whatever the lady hands on you, prosper it. Wherever the tread their feet upon, give it to them as a possession. It is your word, and we pray that it shall be made manifest in their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray, O oh God, that you're going to teach these people how to get to the top and stay there permanently. We know there are techniques and strategies that are necessary for us to be able to get to the top and stay there permanently. It's our desire, so Lord, I pray you do for these ones that which no man can do teach them the strategies and the methods and cause them to get to the top and stay there permanently. Lord, I pray, oh God, that you're going to cause them to be trailblazers, space setters, and wall changers in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that money is going to meet money in their pockets. Blessings is going to meet blessings in their life. Favor will meet favor in their lives. Even as you clothe them with a garment of praise, honor, and favor in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, because I know you're a prayer answering Father. Lord, I pray that you're going to open doors for them that no man can short doors of opportunities beyond their wildest imaginations and you shut every door that is not of you in their lives i pray that you're going to divinely disconnect them from people that will cause them not to progress or things that will cause them not to progress and divinely connect them to people and things that will cause them to progress and be their best versions thank you faithful father open their eyes and enlighten their understanding to know and see those they are supposed to be destiny helpers to so they'll strategically position themselves and help these people and i pray oh god that their own destiny helpers will be strategically positioned waiting whenever they need help that they will come true for them when they i pray this day oh god that you're going to speak blessings into their lives oh god that they'll be blessed so much that people who come in contact with them will literally rub off of the blessing because there will be an overflow so lord i pray that you do for them that which only you can do father i pray oh god that whatever the lady hands on lord you're going to prosper it and i pray oh god this day that you're going to teach them how to fulfill purpose you're going to show them the part and help them to stay straight on the part that they're not going to depart lord we know there comes a time in everybody's life where they feel like they're overwhelmed they feel like they can't go anymore they can't do it anymore when they get to that place let them hear a clean clear loud voice behind them saying this is the way walk that we need so they won't stray the path they won't miss it they will stay on course and fulfill purpose to the glory of your name that at the end of it all it will be glory and singing and dancing perfect all that concerns them give them a sounds wonder and a six state a state of laughter singing rejoicing and dancing so that if you tarry to come by this same time next year they'll be here giving testimonies literally of all the amazing things you've done in their lives thank you ancients of these thank you ever living god for your faithfulness thank you for your goodness thank you for your loving kindness we know you've had an answer to us we we'll seal all this prayer request with the blood of Jesus. We know you've answered already. So we say thank you, thank you, and thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We seal the prayers. Amen. 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 With the blood of Jesus. Amen. Let it be so. Amen. In their lives, I 
last with pray, let it be so. Amen, 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 amen in their lives. Amen, as we have prayed. Amen, let it be in their lives. Yes, Lord, thank you for answering our prayers. And we know it is signed, sealed, done, and dusted. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's get the Bible party started. Get the Bible party started. Ready or not, here I come. The seed book of the Bible. Are you ready? I am ready. I was born ready. Let's go. Joshua chapter 1. Now after the death of Moses the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all these people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that I have given unto you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people shalt thou d divide for an inheritance the land which I sway unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from me to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then shalt thou make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the host, and command the people, saying, Prepare your victuals, for within people i don't know if it's just me but i hear the sound so loud and that's why sometimes i have to stop because i'm not sure how much of it is getting in here we have to limit the bible thingy as much as possible as much as we can so um let's go the noise the background noise sorry this book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the host, and command the people, saying, Prepare you, prepare you victuals, for within three days ye shall pass over this Jordan to go in to possess the land, which the Lord your God giveth you to possess it, and to the Reubenites, and to the Gadites, and to half the tribe of Manasseh, spake Joshua, saying, Remember the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord your God had given you rest and had given you this land. Your wives, your little ones, and your cattle shall remain in the land which Moses gave you on this side, Jordan. But ye shall pass before your brethren, armed, all the mighty men of valor, and help them. Until the Lord had given your brethren rest, as he had given you, and they also have possessed the land which the Lord your God giveth them, then ye shall return unto the land of your possession, and enjoy it, which Moses the Lord's servant gave you on this side Jordan, towards the sun rising. And they answered Joshua, saying, All that thou commandest us, we will do, and whithersoever thou sendest us, we will go. 
According as we hearkened unto Moses in all things, so we will hearken unto thee. Only the Lord be with thee, only the Lord thy God be with thee as he was with Moses. Whosoever he be that doth rebel against thy commandment, and will not hearken unto thy words in all that thou commandest him, he shall be put to death. Only be strong and of a good courage. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Man, the scripture is amazing. Welcome, Mr. Chat Elvis. And one of my favorite scriptures is actually here. Meditate on the word day and night so that it might bring you good success. I always say if the Bible said good success, it means there's bad success. So we should be careful. It's not every success that is good success. There's bad success. And bad success is the one that people give people for rituals to get money. That is bad success. People give people for rituals to get wealthy. People give people for rituals to be able to pass their exams. People give people for rituals to be able to go to their next level. It happens. It happens. So that's bad success. But there's good success. So we want good success. Okay. So after Moses had died, this is what I wanted to say. It was easy to choose Joshua. Not just because Joshua was there. There were lots of people who were there as well. There were lots of people who were following Moses, right? Moses was leading the children of Israel. But Joshua was not only there, he was there and he was intentional about his work. He was learning from Moses. He was following Moses around. He was doing the things that Moses was telling him to do. He was following the instructions that Moses was giving him. There was Joshua and Caleb. But we're hearing more about Joshua because Joshua was like intentional. So there's some things that we want to learn and we have to do. We have to be intentional about these things. Welcome, Mr. Killy Willy. It has been like forever. Happy ages. Welcome back to Facebook. If you had left Facebook before, welcome back to it. And some people don't just want to be intentional. They want to be something. They want to be a particular thing, but they don't want to be intentional. Imagine that. You know, I'm trying to figure, I'm trying to look at it this way. Remember Elisha and Elijah? Remember the children of the prophets? The children of the prophets were probably sitting and they were comfortable because they were children of prophets. And in their minds, for their chuk-chuk mind, they were thinking like, well, one of the prophet's children would definitely, it was not, it was not the monarchy thing. No, 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 no. It wasn't a monarchy thing. It was not about because you are a child of a prophet. So the next prophet is going to be you. Lie, lie to lie, lie. God wasn't going to take it like that. God wasn't going to take it like that. Because it looks like the children of the prophets are started relaxing. And they're just thinking, oh, it's by, because my, not be because your papa and your mommy are passed away, you'll be born again. It's a lie. If you don't accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, now if I go end up, I'm not judging you. I'm just telling you facts. Mm -mm. Judgment is when I tell you that you see you like this, this your life, you go then a fair fire. That is judgment. But right now I'm telling you facts. It has not reached to the place of um, condemning you already and declaring you a half fire candidate. But if you choose not to accept Jesus Christ, you don't choose for go a fire by yourself. You carry your two hands, two legs, and your mind, and went to hell fire by yourself. Nobody took you there. You chose to go there. Hmm? So by not choosing God, you have chosen automatically to be with the devil. So you guys should not get it twisted. You have to be intentional. You have to be intentional. The place where you want to go to, the person that you want to become, you have to be intentional. It doesn't just happen. It doesn't just, you know, sometimes um, God is saying that he's going to give us the hidden treasures of darkness and all these things. And people just think it's going to fall on your lap. No, 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 no. We read a certain scripture the last time and they said that. I don't know what it was for my quiet time or it was a scripture that we're reading. You know, I love you too, my darling. This is one of my students in the, in the, in the house. I don't know what her name is because it's in Thai, so I cannot read it. I love you too. <laughs> so... Um, I don't know if I read it somewhere or it was in the Bible or it was a scripture that we're reading here, but they were talking about, um, there was this time that a certain group of people wanted to, 
they wanted to do a thing but they were not so serious about it and they didn't get it like um where did we read that thing welcome mom bennies welcome 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 woman of god on fire please i'm waiting for the full story i'm waiting for the full message the message to your daughter i want to i want to see it i know it's going to be powerful so there are this group of people that they were like waiting they, wa they wanted to do something like they were thinking like something was just going to happen and then they were just relaxed they were not doing anything about it and then he bypassed them where did i read that thing was it a story or we read it but in a chapter or something it was it was it was crazy like so i realized from there that when you want to get some things you have to get intentional about getting those things it's not just going to fall on your feet oh yeah i think i think it was my quiet time they said that these people is first of all supposed to be out of place that people want to go for war and then they'll be dressed like they're going for a party they're going for a wedding they'll carry jewels like who does that i think people who are going to fight battle they'll keep their precious things at home now would they carry it to battlefront mm -mm. these people carry all their jewelries they dress so gorgeously so when god had an ambush with those people they said the children of israel came and got that spoil jewelries of gold and all those things and fine raiment and all for three good days this is goodness this is spoil but the children of israel had to go and gather it after god ambushed the people the people started fighting between themselves and killed each other the children of israel still had a part to play God was not going to carry the jewelries and the raiments and everything and go and give it to them where they were. They had to go there and see that the people had been ambushed, which was a miracle from God. Thank God. But they had to carry the spoils. They had to carry that spoils for three days. They had to do something, people of God. So while God is saying he's going to give us the hidden treasures of darkness, you need to be open. You need to be alert to see those opportunities. When they're coming here, you grab it. When this opportunity is coming here, you grab it. When God is sending you to this place, you go there and you do what he wants you to do. And then you begin to see the doors are opening. You begin to see the things happening. You're not just going to sit there. When you're doing that and sometimes it might be you submitting to your mentor totally and completely but some of us mm, we don't want to submit we're not just teachable we are not you want to teach someone you want to correct someone about something that they're doing ah, no, no, no. stop judging me oh stop judging me the bible says you should not judge yeah bible says that eh? you can correct disobedience when your obedience is complete so eh, forget that talk we'll go correct when is the time if you see your brother falling you don't help them what do you go do ha are you kidding me right now yesterday we we're talking about this thing and we we're saying that i love people who who can also get to a place and tell me that prince i do what we do and say mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. you know try you know treasure mm -mm, mm -mm. not only the people will be praising you praising you praising you praising you you can't grow you just remain for one level you're comfortable with that level but when they choke you small, 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 they tell you that truth that is really the truth that hurts. Yes, you will walk. You will grow. <laughs> Man, Benis, I can speak pigeon. I don't know why you guys are weighing me. I can speak pigeon. You, know. you guys should wait. My, my story is coming up. I'll tell you my childhood stories and I'll do it in pigeon. Yes, she says you're telling the truth. Ma, you don't read. Princess, don't talk pigeon. <laughs> Ah, correct me if you see me failing it's true friends and that's true friendship you're supposed to be able to tell me you 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 damn the consequences of what is going to happen but some people just want to be these ones that are always goody 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 and then when they see you making a mistake they don't tell you how would you progress you might even fall you might even fall i pray that prayer all the time i say lord if these people are not going to help me to progress disconnect me from them make it in such a way that i'll be disconnected from them lord connect me to people that will push me that will challenge me that will talk me into getting to be my best god knows those people and he can strategically position them in your life and you also need to have a teachable spirit to be able to learn to be able to learn i remember we read in somewhere in deuteronomy oh yes mom bernice 
their friendly frenemies. That is the right thing. Friendly frenemies. There was one time we read a certain scripture where they were saying how Moses called um, Joshua and then he was telling him some things and then he was telling him and encouraging him and telling him that he should not give up, he should not back out. Or oh, he was just encouraging him. If, if, if Joshua didn't have a teachable spirit, he would not even sit with Moses to listen to what Moses had to say. Some of us, we even sit and we're listening to these mentors. Only our body language, eh? It shows we're not listening. You know how you sit with a mentor and then you're chewing your gum and then you're, you know that kind of, I beg me to finish talk, me no bore my ear, my come off here. You know how your body can say that? We women will know how to do it well. It's men that don't even understand it. I seen <laughs> God help us in this generation. Oh, see, a lot of us are not teachable at all. When they correct us, we get irritated. When they correct, welcome, I'm learning a male. Oh my God. And she says, That's that's correct. Me, if you see me falling, correct that's right correct me if you see me falling that's true and she says i value those who correct me me too i really and i don't take them for granted those are the people that i do the best i can to stay by them when they can objectively criticize me when they can objectively correct me because you know you know like you know because you have the spirit of god when someone is correcting you with the heart of love you know it and when someone is just doing I don't know how to call that one, whether it's correction again or it's just jealousy. When someone is talking to you jealously because they don't want you to do something, it, you also know. Your spirit man will tell you, say, do one, not lie. The person that jealousy this, this is jealousy talking. But when there's correction, you know in your heart of heart that this one is correction and you need to work on it. So you have, you have a teachable spirit. Sometimes people come up with these things like, princess made that post because she knows something about my life now lie holy spirit it convicts you if you're feeling like i make that post because i know you then it's for you change is the holy spirit telling you that you need this message change it's not about what that princess was saying it and 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 all that correct me or rather let me be destroyed i'm telling you i'm telling you Correct me. I love people who correct me. And that's why I love people like Mom Inspired Grizel. She will tell me when it's not okay. She will praise me when it's praise time. And she will bang it when it's banging time. <laughs> I love Mom. Um, there's also this woman of God. Mom Kate Kebila. Oh, Princess D1, you fall my hand. You fall my hand. She will say it straight though. She, <laughs> oh my God. She will be smiling and saying it. I'm serious, oh mom. I said the laugh so I'm serious. Like, I need that. Because that's how you grow. You're challenged. You know that you have to do better at this thing. Ha! Huh? I'm telling you. Sometimes I'm scared, I'm scared to post a particular post. Because I remember the time that I posted something and the person called me and said that, what, what can people learn on that post? I was shocked. The truth is that I posted that thing in other groups and to other people and everybody was calling me and telling me that, oh, thank you for this post. Oh, it really ministered to me. It really spoke to me. And then somebody, because I told them something before and then they gave me an information. So when I posted that, they took it for, I'm trying to challenge what they said. It didn't even occur to me until the person was talking about it. Then I started asking God, the Holy Spirit, truly, Please search me. Oh, if there was a part in my heart that had this thought before I was posting this thing, I beg, I'm sorry. Are they sorry? I had to go and delete that post. Oh, hey, my sister, I be go go delete the post. Hmm. It is well. Mom, Jesus say, ha, guilty conscience. Oh, someone won't post. Oh, I'm telling you, it is serious. Some go gather the full village for your post. Mom is very that you know them. In fact, you, you've experienced it. I can relate. <laughs> I'm telling you, I've gotten to a point where I've told myself that God, if you made me post it, then it's for somebody. And that one person is going to love it. I don't care who doesn't like it. I don't care who feels like they're hurt about this post because they think it's for them. I remember some time ago, a sister of mine, a friend of mine, I was going to say something on my live stream and I know her personally. You know, she has told me her story. She has told me some things she has been through. 
And then I was going to say something on the live stream that was coming to my heart to say, and then she just popped up in the live stream. You know, I was struggling not to say it. I really struggled with myself. I was trying to say something else, but you know, as God will have it, I ended up saying it. She came back to me after the live stream and told me that day. She was asking God for an answer to something that she was going through. That I know what she has been through and all these kinds of things. So she was asking God for answer. That do I know that I gave the answer on that live stream? I was like, huh? Say yeah. That the answer was that thing that I said. I was shocked that I actually eventually said it because it was in my head. I was fighting it in my head while I was on this live stream and talking. And that's why I like the beauty of the fact that God doesn't allow me to read some things before I come on here because I would so edit it. That there will be some things that I will not say. <laughs> if it's left to me. Me. Like this me. So princess no. I don't go talk at me. But God knows how he deals with me. Ah, I, I was like God. So this is how it is. So imagine me fighting to say something. Because I'm feeling like the girl will feel bad that I'm saying these things. Because I know her. And she's in the live stream. Meanwhile God was bringing her at that time. Because he wanted me to say the thing. Anyways thank God for God. He's very merciful. He ended up making me say it without me even being conscious about it. He ended up making me say it and it was help for her. That was the answer she needed. But look at me. Look at the way I was thinking. That, oh, I know her story. When I say this thing now, she'll feel that. She'll feel that what? Th that one concern me. Holy Spirit is saying, say this one. Say this one. Whoever takes it the way that they take it is their own. Your own part is to say it. What to be your own wala? God has helped me oh, several times. So now on it, I the post, I the talk as raw as it is. It provoke you, go and converse it to God. Because me so no, I don't get power. I didn't day. I don't even have power. I say it as it is coming out from my mouth. I need the whole no one. I'm not holding anything back. Because sometimes when I'm even saying some things and it's echoing in my head, I'm saying, princess, this is for you. This one. You get for go fix the part for you. I know that the message is for me. It is that serious. Then I'll have to be bothering about who is going to get angry and who is going to get irritated. Man inspired Grisel says, Some go go gather the full village for your <laughs> I know that feeling, woman of God. See, they will come and talk and insult and do ah, before I'll try to I'll try to reply, I'll try to explain, I'll try. Some people have made up their minds not to understand though. They are not even there to understand. They are just even there to cause trouble on your post. So not the ones that you should... Not be all dog way back where you more pick stone shoots. No. Ignore some of Ignore some of those back things. Man Bernie says, Some people self can hype you until you feel you've made it in life. See? I said they can hype you until you go and run for presidential election. What are you talking about? You're only talking about making it in life. You can go and run for president. What are you talking about? In my country, that will first of all need good president like this. They can hype you until you go and run for president. <laughs> you go and enter your doom. Hmm. You get a CB. Mom is back with say, That's the thing. People hold us guilty just because they feel that we made the message because of what we know about them. Truth is, most situations are a reality for many. It's true. Most situations are a reality for many. I tell you the truth. Sometimes when I post some messages, people come and tell me what they're going through. They say, oh, they're going through this similar thing, but they didn't even know that this is what it is, and they didn't even know how to go about it. Meanwhile, imagine me who was sitting there and thinking like, if I post this one, now, now that I know this person's story, sometimes that's why I don't even want people to tell me their stories. Because it kind of makes me feel guilty at some time as to what I want to post and what I want to put where. That this person is going to be thinking like this. Why am I in people's heads? Why am I trying to think for people? Ah. The one that the spirit of God directs you to do. Do. Do your part. However some people take it. That is not your part to play. It's between them and the Holy Spirit. If they are teachable, they will take it and learn. If they are not teachable, they will continue and they will end in destruction. It is simple. It is not your work. Leave the Holy Spirit to do his work. Don't carry Holy Spirit job to do Stop trying to read people's minds. Do your own. Ha. I post that don't I post that don't envy testimony. You don't know. And the next question in my inbox is who said it? Ha. Now wow. That's another thing with people on social media. It feels like every single thing you post on your wall 
probably has happened to you. It can't be something that has happened. Or it can't be something that God just dropped in your spirit for the world, for somebody. It has to be you who experienced it. <laughs> it is well, though. I remembered saying when I was doing the series, my journey out of depression, I remember somebody asking me that who qualified me to come and be talking about depression. I'm like, are you trying to invalidate what I felt or are you, what, what are you saying exactly? Person said, no, you have to be medically proven. Say, I don't know my states. I don't know what I'm feeling. <laughs> hey, one that shall never end. I seen a, Meanwhile, people were coming and relating because they know that it's something that somebody has really gone through. So it ministered to them. And they were coming and telling me that, oh, they were going through these kinds of things. This is what they were doing. And all the time, when I was doing that video, I was always doing a disclaimer. Sometimes at the start, sometimes at the end. I say, if you're someone who has been clinically proven depressed and you're taking your drugs, please keep taking your drugs. So don't stop taking your drugs because you followed one of the techniques or the tips that I gave here and it's working for you. Let your medical practitioner not tell you that stop taking the drugs because they've seen process and progress don't go and stop taking your drugs because you've used one or two of my tips and it's working for you all me i'm not a medical practitioner i'm telling you what i did and it worked for me hmm. it was a serious issue say who gave me who gave me the authority as in which authority am i using to be talking about depression now wow so I can't talk about my experience because I've not been um, paper-based qualified. Some of these people who even have the papers that are doing nothing with it. I should sit down and be waiting until I've gone to school and become a medical practitioner for depression or for things before I start talking about something that I experienced. God has given me an opportunity and a platform to share my experience so that people can be blessed and people can be transformed. He has saved me. I should wait until... <laughs> they never born you. Continue. Mom inspired Grace says, sometimes we share to help others in similar situations. My sister, oh! Or to prevent someone from taking the same path. I'm telling you, that's what it was. I, I, when I started doing it, I was doing my journey out of depression. And basically i was saying the things that i did to get out and then i felt like I, I think a month after i started it i i had this strong thing in my spirit that yes you're telling them how you got out can you also tell them because you know the things that you need that you did to get in and you were not supposed to do those things so why not also start a series of how not to even get there so I started, I was, I was really fighting it and everything. After a while, I started it. And then people come and be telling me how, who gave me the qualification, who gave me the right, as in, <laughs> tis well, oh, the Lord is helping us, my dear. We'll continue doing it, oh. As long as the Lord puts it in our hearts, we'll speak it. When it's time to correct, we'll correct. The ones who take the correction, they'll grow. The ones who don't take the correction, they will end up in destruction. It is a choice, my dear. It not be by force. It is a choice. You will make the choice. Even God himself came. He could not make the choice for us. He said, I put before you life and death. Choose life. Now you get a still last choose. If you decide to choose death, now you choose them. He didn't force it on you. Blessing and curse. Choose blessing. Life comes with blessing. But if you decide to choose curse, shall be you end in destruction. Ha. So God will really have all these people like this and create all this creation and then send them to hell fire. No, because they send them to hell fire, they are choosing to go to hell fire. Hmm? There's no middle ground. By not choosing God, you're automatically choosing to go to hell. It's a choice. You made the choice. God didn't make it for you. He didn't force you. He's not deciding to send you there. He's desiring strongly that you come to repentance. And that's why he died while you are yet a sinner. He didn't die already like, you know, he didn't wait for you to have to desire to want to be saved before he died for you. He died while you were still a sinner. You didn't even know that you needed a saving. He still saved you. So it's say you go come frighten God and frighten God with your emotional blackmail about 
and God cannot create all this creature and then send them to him. <laughs> when you be marching inside their head, your sight of fire go hot, especially if you knew. <laughs> then you played with it. They say that even the devil and his agents, they know the word of God, they know the power in the word of God and they tremble. Some of us who are taking word of God for a joke, eh? We should be joking. <laughs> uh, it is well with the righteous. Welcome, big sis. Mom Maureen D is in the building. Welcome, welcome, welcome. God bless you, woman of God. Thank you, thank you for coming. And so let's go on. The next one says, Moses, Moses, my servant is dead now. God was like, what we're saying was, it was easy for God to just choose Cal, um, Joshua because Joshua was already available. Are we available for God to use us? Are we readily available? Joshua was available when Moses was about to die. He had already started working with Moses. He was teachable. He was submissive. He sat under Moses' tutelage. Moses taught him perfectly. And so when Moses was leaving, it was easy for him to sit in the shoes. It was easy for him to fit in the position. But some of us, we don't want to learn. We don't want to be led, but we want to lead. In any walk so. You would have to be led to lead. Because it's under leadership that you learn how to lead others. So please, eh? Let's learn to submit under our leaders. You go to this church because someone did World War War to you, you change to the next church. Oh church get wala. You go here, the problem will be dressing. You go there, the problem will be gossip. You go there, the problem. Every church has this problem. Go to church because you want to have an encounter with God. When it is on your mind that you're going to church to have an encounter with God, you will not see those things that people do. I remember this story where they gave this person. The person came and said, oh, they're going away from church. This person is doing this. That one is doing this. And then the pastor gave the person a glass of water. Put it on your head. Walk around the church for two minutes and then come back and tell me. Walk around the church. He was so conscious and so focused. The pastor asked him, did you see anybody? Did you see people quarreling? Did you see people arguing or gossiping? No, I didn't see them. Why? Because you were focused. You had a focus. When you go to church with the right focus, eh? You won't see the thing that all these people are doing around you. Mm-hmm. You will not. But because we are going to church with the wrong focus, some people they go to church and go show their new clothes. Some people they go to church and go compete. Some people are going to church for the very wrong reasons. And that's why you see all those things that are paining you. Yes, that's why you can see that. Oh, the pastor's wife came today. Look at the way she was looking. She's showing off. So what? Who sent you? Who sent you to be watching the pastor's wife? Who who give you assignment? Did God tell you that your call, your calling was to be fashion police? Mm -mm. Find your calling and walk in your calling. When you go to church, have the right frame of mind. You will not see all those things. You will not see all those things. Mamari says, more grace. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm right here with you. He said, your wisdom can never be greater to you. <laughs> it is well, oh, it is God, oh, woman of God. It is God. It is God that is helping us. I'm telling you, we're in, age of, we're in the age of so much distraction. Any little thing can distract you. If you don't put your focus right, any little thing can distract you. The worst part is social media is not helping you. And since any Tom, Dick and Harry can join Facebook and go live and say any kind of jazz. Eh? If you don't stick to the word of God. If you don't become the Berean Christians and listen to somebody and go back and listen and read the word of God again. Let it See the word of God is a standard. Oh. My, my morning devotions today, um, they were talking about how... There is a whole lot of, they asked a certain man of God in those days, like old man of God. They, they asked him that what is his fear for the generation that is to come. He says his, his fear for the generation that is to come is religion without God. Christianity without Christ. It pains my heart because it is the reality of today. Politics without Christianity, without the true word of God. Like we are so doctrinal. 
So much so that we've forgotten that the Holy Spirit is there to teach us, to guide us, to lead us into all truth. But how will we not be doctrinal when we don't even have a personal relationship with the Holy Spirit? We don't. The Holy Spirit is there to teach us all truth. It is the Bible that is the standard. Men are fallible. Men can make mistakes. And that's why some of those doctrines, they are actually making us to just be standing on religions and principles and cultures that they're not even godly and it's making us to keep god out of christianity so we have christianity this kind of christianity that there's no christ in it mm -mm. oh my best sis in the building hi it's mr Calvin watching and i actually thought of you today i said it has been a long time that i've not spoken to you and i've not been on youtube for like forever so I had to get to look out for you. Oh my God, you have long life, Jesus. And you're here today. I miss you too, my dear. And mom inspired Grisel say, focus is very vital. in It is very, very vital. Not even only in church, woman of God, in life. Eh? If you don't have a focus, you see Jesus. Jesus was focused on the glory that was set before him and he endured the cross. If we're also focused on the glory that is set before us, we'll not see all these distractions. We won't. Are we saying they're not going to be there? They will be there. Oh. They will be there. But if you have the right focus, you will not. You will not. You will not be moved. You will not be carried away. And welcome, Mama Rivera. Awesome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Today I learned. I learned at the difference between knowing God and knowledge of God. See, and that's the truth. A lot of us have the knowledge that God exists. We know like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But we don't know God. Knowing God means you have a personal relationship with God. You have that personal relationship. I, when I was in high school, I did religious studies. I wrote it for the GC. I passed. I passed religion. But I didn't. I just had the knowledge of God. I know who God is. God created the heavens and the earth. He created man. He did. I knew all of that. I could quote, I could literally quote um, 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 Corinthians 13. Love is patient, love is kind. I could quote it literally. But none of it was practical in my life. Not even an iota of it. That is me having the knowledge of God. <laughs> this is what God is saying. These are the principles. These are the precepts. These are the tenets in the Bible. But were they a practical reality in my life? No. Because I didn't have Christ. I didn't know God. People were experiencing God. They were living the life of Christ. Because they knew God. But I just had a knowledge of who God is. I didn't know him. And a lot of Christians in this our generation. They just have a knowledge of who God is. They don't know God. And that's why. It, it's it's funny because the Bible has already told us that there are a lot of people like that. They would say, I, I, I did this in your name. I did this in your name. And God is going to say, depart from me. I know you not. You workers of iniquity. We are so filled with activities for the kingdom, but we don't have time with God. God created us for worship. God created us because he needed to have time with Adam in the Garden of Eden. He always comes in the cool of the day and fellowships with Adam. I always ask the question, eh? Can you marry? Can you be in a relationship with your husband and then you send some other person to go and have intercourse with your husband or your wife for you? I don't no let's let's be logical let's bring practical examples so we should we should get it real we should we should make it real because that's exactly what some of us Christians are doing we want every other person to read the Bible for us and give us the knowledge we want every other person we pay people to fast for us see the thing they pain me for my up chest you pay people to fast for you you pay people to pray for you you pay people to study the word like seriously it's like saying you got married and then you're finding another girl to come and have intercourse with your husband for you shebi can you do that you can't so why are we doing that to god like do you see how it sounds logically speaking it makes no sense but that's exactly what we're doing 
that's exactly what most of us as Christians were doing. We don't want to have a per- there, there is no way someone can have a personal relationship for God, for you with God. There is no way. You have to do it yourself. You have to do it yourself. Hi. Some of us will be here. Is it crusade? Is it um, choir practice? Is it this? But no relationship at all with God. Welcome, Mom Pamela Lesperance. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Her birthday just passed. It's not been long. Happy birthday. It's still your month, so I know you're having fun and you're enjoying. Hope you had a blast. I hope so. I'm telling you, it is so sad. And, and you know, the truth about it is that recently... The Holy Spirit said to me that some of these activities you're doing, baby girl, it is the enemy that is giving you work. It's not even me. I was taken aback, but I had to sit back and do a retrospect and I knew it was true. Oh, there's work here. There is this one there. There is that one there. Nothing godly, isn't it? So you know like you know. Say the one that say. God know they involved. <laughs> You're doing all those activities, but you know in your hearts, sincerely, when you sit down and be true to yourself, you know God is not involved. A lot of us were so, I mean, like we were so choked these past two months. I was almost literally not doing my morning devotions. I told myself that day, I would rather do it and say I'm saving my conscience so that I'm still taking in the word of God because this particular one that I'll be reading, even if it's in a rush, it will be dropped and saved in my subconscious as opposed to me not just doing it because, oh, I miss doing it in the morning. Now lie, devil, you, you die wrong number. You don't even get credit for call me. You don't even try, you know, walk. You miss the number. I said that I didn't pray the time that I was supposed to pray. I go pray the time where I get the opportunity to, to pray because eh, I know that prayer is important in my life as a Christian. I will not feel guilty and then don't pray. I, I will feel guilty and pray. I will not feel guilty and then don't do the morning devotion because time don't pass. I will feel guilty and do it. So eh, if you are waiting before me, you don't miss her. You miss targets. Try another place. Not be me. Because that's what the enemy is using now. Especially for some of us. Like the work is so much. It's no joke. It's a reality. And so you have to find a way. You just have to find a way. There are no excuses. So we won't give this. Ex- we know that we cannot give these excuses to God. If it means you have to take your own time. The little time that you would have to have. To do what God would have you to do. To do what will grow your relationship with God. You have to do it though. It is for your good. Because with the way the world is going right now. (laughs) I don't know people who are not born again. How they are doing. Because even me who is born again. It's not funny. Not be chocolate. (laughs) It takes some extra grace. To live in this world right now. And you know the funny part, news flash, it's not getting any better. The Bible says that in the last days, perilous times will come. It did not say joyous times. It did not say enjoyment times. It said perilous times will come. And you know the scripture, if you hear me pass, if the days are not shortened, even the very elect will be deceived. So don't be shocked when you see somebody who had been preaching the undiluted word of God all of a sudden starts preaching jazz. Don't be shocked though. It is in the word of God. It is scriptural. The love of many who work school. People want to hear what they want to hear. Itchy ears. But I say minus me because I would study the word. I will continue relating with God. If people call me foolish, I am excited and unapologetic with straight chest, a fool for God. I'm unashamed. I am a Jesus freak. Give any name you want to give it to. Are they ready? This one, we have a focus. Heaven is the destination. 
living the life of Christ here on earth is my goal. And I will do it unashamedly. Yeah, you're only preaching the gospel on your channel. You should do other things. Go to the channel that are doing the other things now by force. My own channel is to preach the word of God. If you don't like it, bounce. I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry for preaching the word of God every day. I'm not sorry. You. Please, I will not be sorry anytime soon. I have not been sorry. I am not sorry. I will not be sorry in the future. If it's about preaching the word of God. Just find channel that they are doing the things that you like there. <laughs> so much for not liking my channel and being there every day and telling me that I should not be preaching the word of God. Just be there. The Holy Spirit will convict you one day. Eh? Just be going around. The Holy Spirit will convict you one day. <laughs> and he says, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all these people, unto the land which I do give unto thee, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, I love this scripture, that I have given unto you, as I said unto Moses. So God is a promise keeper. God keeps his promises. He never makes empty promises. God always keeps his promises. So he had said to Moses, he was repeating it. Oh, Mr. Dead Donald is in the building. We've missed you on a chapter a day. Oh my God, you're your 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 wisdom part has been missed very much missed on the chapter a day we're glad to hope you have you today don't mind my pancake gimmicks okay <laughs> people won't get this part <laughs> so it says from the wilderness and this lebanon even unto the great river the river euphrates all the lands of the hittite and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of your life as i was with moses so i'll be with thee i'll not fail thee nor forsake thee this is god giving us a promise as children of god for as he has been with our forefathers abraham isaac jacob and all the apostles he will be with us he says i will be with you all the way i'm not leaving you nor forsaking you that is the assurance we need people have assurance of cars people have assurance of money but we have assurance of the holy spirit of god himself being with us we do want again we do want that's the best assurance anybody can ever have in this life that God is with you, the creator of the universe, the owner of everything, the one who called for things that were not as though they are. He's with you. What else do you need? We really need to sing this in. I think we need to tell ourselves every day. It should be one of our positive confirmations, for positive affirmations. God is with me all the way. God is with me every day. God is with me today, now, and forever. It should be our affirmation so that it should sink in our spirits and, and remain there. And we should truly believe it. You know, like you know that your name is Mr. Donald. Nobody can convince you that that's not your name, right? That's how we should also know that God is with us. Because it's real. He is with us. He is with us. And it says, be courageous, be strong and of good courage. I'm with you like I was with my servant Moses. I'm with you like I was with the apostles. I'm with you like I was. God is with us. We need to believe it. We need to believe it. We need to believe it. We need to own it. He's truly with us. I don't know what language I can say it in, but he, God is truly with us. And he never fails. He has said he will never leave us nor forsake us. It's true. We have to believe it. And he says, um, Be strong and of good courage. For unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give to them. God makes his promises. He keeps them. It may not happen the time in your timetable. Get to learn God's timetable because it happens in his timetable, not yours. So you might be thinking God is going to do this thing in two days and God is going to do it in two years. You might be thinking he's going to do it in two years and then he does it in two minutes. God is sovereign. Try to see things with the lens of God's eyes through the lens of God's eyes try to understand things through the light of his word and then you're gonna know 
that if God had said it, then he would do it. He told the people, let's go to the other side. I love that example. He didn't tell them there was going to be a storm. But as long as Jesus is in the boat, you can drown. You must get to the other side because he has said so. Oh yeah, that's the truth. Did God say children are a gift unto the Lord? And people are covering you barren because you've been married for 10 years without a child? Whose report do you believe? The report of God or man's report? Sarah was double past menopause. But she gave birth. Because God said so. What has God said to you, child of God? Hold on to that word. It will come to pass. He didn't give you the time frame. He didn't tell you what was going to happen from the time he said it to you. He said that to Abraham when he was 75 years old. It manifested 25 years after. You think you've waited? Ask Abraham. You think you've waited? Ask David. He was anointed king, but it took him 17 years to finally sit on the throne. People of God, let's be patient. Patience is a virtue and a fruit of the Spirit. As children of God, we need it. And it says, only be thou strong. In one chapter, it was said there, be thou strong and courageous. Be strong and do not be afraid. Be, like almost 10 times. In this particular chapter, this was said over and over and over. You think God lacked what he, want, what he could say? He knew that he needed, Joshua needed to hear this and let it sink deep in the spirit and stay there so that he should believe it so much so that nobody can tell him differently. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. We always read this part and we don't get it all, all in. There is a part where you have to do. There is a doing. The success and the prosperity comes in a doing. So after you've prayed, after you've trusted God, after you've believed in God, after you've studied the word and meditated on it day and night, you have to do it. You have to do it. You know, go just read and she don't. Then things just begin to happen. Mm -mm. The blessings come not only to the hearers of the word, but the doers of the word. You have to do something. Find something. Because God is going to give you a mind-blowing idea like he gave to his son, Mr. Ndede Donat, and Alakuma Pekin is making waves. People of God, we have to do something. We don't just hear the word. We don't just meditate on it. Show me your faith, your faith and your works. Faith without works is dead. Results no day. Ma'am inspired Grizel, no action, no results. Mr. Donald says, match your actions with words. Let, let, let them be a matching action. When you're talking and talking and talking, may action follow. For God so loved the world, he spoke that he loved the world. Then he gave. May action follow. God has said. God has said. Let us see you doing. If Mr. Donald just allowed Alakuma Pekin to be in his head, we no go get fine, fine t-shirt there and fine, fine hoodie there for the wear the swung around. Mm -mm. If mom inspired Grizel got all those creative ideas to be an African prince freak that you can get even your jewelries be African print, you can get your clothes be African print. If she did not put action, we no go the wear the fine fine clothes than the shwan. Mm -mm. Action, people, no take action. We should stop 
lazing in the name of we are praying a lie. You don't pray. God don't drop idea. Take action. See, the truth is that eh, sometimes when you start, you will not get it right. It doesn't mean God is not there. No, 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 no. Sometimes you learn as you go. You learn as you go. You, 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 they, you can't just stay at strategizing. You have to take action. You can't just stay at praying. God has told you what to do. Act on it. It's the action. If Jesus was saying, saying over and over, I came to die for you people to set you free, then no die. Wait if I happen, nothing. Would I still been in sin and be suffering? He had to die. Action. Get, like action. God himself has shown us already. Action. Get for day. But this is our generation. Talk, talk, talk. Pop, 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 pop. Every place. Action. No day. Talk is cheap. Even there will be preached Bible for Jesus. What are you thinking? Jump for me. I'll give you all that. Now Bible. It's there for word of God. All that is in this world. We gave it all. We handed it over to the devil. Is there if God through Jesus that came and took it back and gave it us to gave it back to us. Now Bible will be the preached to Jesus. So. But actually, you know if it do. That's the difference between us and the enemy. Because he knows the word of God. They say he knows the word of God and he trembles. Some of us who are taking the word of God for, for Joko, would they take the word of God lightly? Meanwhile, that word has power in our hands, in our mouths, and in our deeds. So it has power. But we need a user. We're not using it. We're not doing nothing. The Bible says whatever you lay your hands on, you need for put action. You don't really need to talk. You don't really need to speak the faith. Speaking the confession is good, but act. Action is needed. And it says that meditate on it day and night. And then do it. Do what is written there. Then it will bring you good success and it will make your way prosperous. They use these adjectives because there is bad success. Let me just say it at once. So if you don't believe, know that there is bad success. And we're talking yesterday, we mentioned something that there are some things that are good things, but they are not God things. God wants us to do good things. And that's why I said the Holy Spirit reprimanded me some days back and said, Oh dear, plenty, plenty activity. I know they do. Was it sinful activity? It's not sinful activity, so they were good activities. Shebi was me uploading um, Bible chapters online so that people can listen to the word of God. Shebi was me editing Bible videos. Mm. There's time when God wants a personal communion with you. So you can tell yourself, you can convince yourself. Ah, but I'm watching my gospel video now. Ah, I'm watching my gospel message now. Ah, God wants you to come and pray. God wants you to come and have personal time with him. We have to get to a point where we know the difference. Oh. Plenty, plenty activity, no relationship. Our relationship with God is more important than our activities for God. Please, oh, let's hear that again. Our relationship with God is much more important than our activities for God. Because when we truly have a relationship with God, He will tell us the things we should do for Him. So it is better you stay in the place of communion and hear exactly what God wants you to do. Because there are people who come out in the place of prayer and then overtake Ahab who is on the chariot. There are people like Elijah who will pray and pray and pray and then overtake, El uh, overtake Ahab who is on the chariot. There are people that will take time to be in the presence of God and things that people have taken 10 years to do, they will take 10 minutes to do. They will take one hour to do it. You know the difference? Because God gave them the strategy. I remember one of our listeners said sometime here that they gave him some job that was supposed to last for an hour. And then he sat on his desk and then he said slowly in his heart, Holy Spirit, show me how. And he got done in 15 minutes. Then he burst into laughter and he's like, oh, Holy Spirit, you be grand. 
You know, you know how when the Holy Spirit does those things that he does with you? I, I don't know, but you can't explain this feeling to someone and they get it. The person needs to experience it to be able to understand it. The feeling is like you're flying without wings. You know how when everybody is taking so much time to do a particular thing and then you just stay in the place of prayer and ask God one or two techniques and then he just gives you something and then you just do dun 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 and you're done. As opposed to not having that relationship, that quiet time with him and then you're struggling all the way and then sometimes you end up not even still being able to do it right. All these people... Isaacs, they had a relationship with God for them to know enough that we are not going to go to Egypt like our fathers did. But we're going to stay in, 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 in Canaan. We're not only going to stay in Canaan, but God is telling us to plant in barren land. That actually defies all odds of science, all odds of their planting that they had known from when they were growing up. You don't plant in barren land. You plant on fertile soil. But he had a relationship enough to know that that's what he had to do. And he ever said a hundredfold. If a hundredfold was not abnormal, they would not have mentioned it because, of course, every time that they sow the harvest. But this was an unusual harvest. Funny enough, it was in barren land. That's what happens when God is the one who gives you the direction. That's why it brings us to the place where we need to have a relationship with God so that God will be the one leading and guiding us so we can do the things right and get it right. So we can do the God things, not just the good things. Building a house for God was a good thing, but that was not what God wanted David to do. David had a different job. Everybody has something that God created them to do. When you find that thing, you put all your focus to it. You put all your resources to it. As opposed to going all around the place and doing this and that and that. And then it starts looking like God didn't give you enough resources. Because you're dis depleting the resources that are available to you in places where God did not send you. He no send you. Now you take care for what you serve God is doing. You can't blame God. For doing what he didn't send you to do. He doesn't back you up in a place that he didn't send you. Don't get it twisted. If God no send you, he no go back you. <laughs> it is well with us. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. This is like the fourth time. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. This is what is supposed to make you not to be afraid or to be discouraged because God is with you. It says when you pass through the fire, I'll be with you. You shall not get burned. When you pass through, it didn't say if, it said when. It means there is going to be a time. Your fire is not the same like mine. Your water is not the same as mine. So don't be looking at me and saying, Lord, why is this person going like this, like that, like that? No, we have two different destinies. Even identical twins have different thumbprints. They have unique thumbprints. That's how unique you are. Stop comparing yourself with other people. The Bible says they that compare themselves with themselves are not wise. Focus. Stay on your lane. Stay on your lane. Somebody must be a truck pusher in this life, but be the best. Somebody must be an Okada rider, but be the best. Somebody must be a farmer, be the best. You get it? The person who sold the president's clothes is a teller. Give it any name, whether it's fashion designer or what. He was just the best, so he was chosen to sew for the, for the president. Be the best at whatever you're called to do. And no job is small. There must be truck pushers in this world for the world to balance. Be the best. Who said it? That you should... That you should be a sweeper so much so that you should sweep streets in such a way that everybody in heaven will say there was such a sweeper that even heaven can heal him. 
don't take your job for granted don't take your calling don't take your talent for granted don't take what god has called you to do for granted because people look it small you see the anus it's one of the smallest parts of the bi- of the body you, you barely even see it you barely even notice it but if that anus decides that it's not going to release the waste in your body eh, you go no say a kakino be leather <laughs> have you ever constipated <laughs> oh my god not with me go tell you the story until you get the experience you will know that eh, as tiny as that part of the body is it's important cannot be overemphasized <laughs> let's know who we are in christ and what god has called us to do and do it unapologetically and be our best at it learn if you have to learn to be the best at that thing go for training if you have to go for training find books about it and read if you have to find people who have gone ahead of you and learn from them if you have to but be the best at whatever god has told you to do don't minimize your your legit hustle don't and don't let anybody make you feel bad about your legit hustle don't no give them face. Go do your business with your straight chest as long as it's legit. I mean to tell you, I'm not sorry about my business that I do. I love it. I own it. And I do it with a passion. People either sorry me that they know. They're sorry me and giving me money. Shebi, is that not the idea? To earn money while you're doing business. So as they're feeling sorry for me that I'm selling and walking around under the sun, they're paying for it and I'm getting money. <laughs> then Joshua com- commanded the officers saying, pass through the host and command the people saying, prepare your victual, prepare your victuals. For within three days, ye shall pass over this Jordan to go in to possess the land, which the Lord your God giveth you to possess it. And the Rebenites and to the Gadites, and to the Rebenites and to the Gadites, and to how the tribe of Manasseh spake Joshua, saying, Remember the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord your God had given you rest and had given you this land. Your wives, your little ones, and your cattle shall remain in the land which Moses gave you on this side, Jordan. But ye shall pass before your brethren, armed all the mighty men of valor, and help them. There are some times that God gives us rest to be able to help other people. So God gave these people their land already. Before they were getting into the promised land, they had a land that was on the other side of the Jordan. It was still part of the land that God had promised he was going to give them. They actually made a request that Moses should give them that side of the land because they are cattle rarers, all their people have grown to this. You know, Sometimes we need to go to God and tell him exactly what we want he'll give us so they gave them this but he said they can't just sit now and relax because they've gotten their own land no they have to join the people as all the children of israel they were going to fight and remove everybody from the land and then when everybody has had rest they can go to to their land but the good thing is i think they were much more favored because their children their wives and all their cattle had to remain back what if this ones they suffered losses while they're going to, into battle because they were going along with their children and every other person because they had never gotten their own land tricky right so that was some sort of favor but then god had already said and since they accepted that they were going to go and help their brothers and fight then they had to go there are some people in your life that god has brought to your life don't 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 take them for granted God has brought to your life to support you, to help you, so that you can also gain a footing in your place of calling, in your place of purpose. Be appreciative of them. Be appreciative of them. It is important. You have to be appreciative of them. So God has brought these people to your life so that they can be able to help you and support you, get the victory that he has ordained and purpose for you so these people had to join and help the children of israel even though they already had their land they had to still go and join the children of israel it's a promise they made and they had to keep their promise so those of you who make promises and you don't keep it's a very bad thing 
when you make a promise keep it you know some people would have just gotten up and said that anyway moses don't die self so these people will probably not remember but you know joshua remember why because he was always there he was listening he knew when those people made that promise he knew a lot of things that moses had told him and moses had taught him because he was following moses all the time he was going around when moses was going so he knew a lot of things so people could not play him out People could not just play over his intelligence. I'm like, no, 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 no. That's not what Moses said. Oh, and you know, in those days, there was nothing in writing. It was only saying, 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 I say, and I said, and I say, and I said, it's the 10 commandments that were written down. Oh. The rest of the things, it was this one said, and I said, this one said. So imagine, they could, no, we didn't say that to Moses. So when, when did you hear us saying that to Moses? He was there. So he heard it and he knew it. But then today, some prophecies are coming out. We don't even know where it's coming from. Some of them are not even true. We cannot know how we know when we're not in the place of prayer. How we know when we don't even have the word of God. There are some things that when I listen to somebody, the person is preaching, you know, the message is so good until it parted. The Holy Spirit said, lie, do one, deny, reject, reject, error, 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 error. Why am I knowing that it's error? Because I know what the Bible says about that thing. Because I know what the Bible says concerning that thing. So my people, my people, we need to study the word of God to be able to find error, to be able to know the wrong thing and not to be tossed to and fro every wind of doctrine. And it says, um, until the Lord had given your brethren rest as he had given, given you, and they also have possessed the land which the Lord your God giveth them, then ye shall return unto the land of your possession and enjoy it, which Moses the Lord's servant gave you on this side Jordan towards the sun rising. And they answered Joshua, saying, All that thou hast commanded us, we will do, and whithersoever thou sendest us, we will go. Those are people who have a teachable spirit. Those are people who are ready to submit to leadership. Those are people who are ready to submit to authority. But you know the children of Israel, right? They flip like, I don't know. <laughs> they change like chameleon. One minute they are four. The next minute they are fighting you tooth, nail, and finger. Like, I don't understand these people. One minute they are excited and they are coming back to God and they are sorry and everything. The next minute they are doing one or that crazy thing that is just getting on God's nerves like yesterday. <laughs> Moses really tried for these people, Sha. And says, and they answered Joshua and said, All that thou hast commanded, we will do. And whithersoever thou sendest us, we will go. According as we hearken unto Moses in all things, so will we hearken unto thee. Only the Lord thy God be with thee as he was with Moses. Moses had also spoken to them and pleaded with them that they should give um, Joshua every accordant of respect that they gave to him because he is handing over everything to Joshua and soon he will not be here. Those are the kinds of mentors we, we desire to have that would put us at the forefront and encourage the people and cause the people to be able to support us and give us the support that we need to be able to go on with the vision, to be able to run ahead with the vision the way that it was intended to be run with. Moses had already prepared the people's heart, spoken to them, encouraged them. Moses had already prepared Joshua's heart, encouraged him and spoken to him. <coughs> so he practically spoke to the two sets of people, the Israelites, and he also spoke to Joshua. So a whole lot of things were already put in place before Moses died. And so they say, according as we hearkened unto Moses in all things, so we will hearken unto thee. Only the Lord thy God be with thee as he was with Moses. This is practically praying for their leaders. And we need to pray for our leaders more rather than backbite them, rather than insult them, rather than look for the little things that they're doing or not doing right. You know, looking for finding every tiny little bit, wincy bit of fault in our leaders is not a good thing. The Bible says, smite the shepherd, the sheep scatter. So sometimes the enemy knows that that's the best thing he can do. And so our leaders are more vulnerable. We have to take our time to pray for them. Really need to take our time to pray for our leaders. They go through a whole lot. And the truth is they're human beings like us. They are not abstract. They're not extraordinary human beings. We should not be expecting so much from them. They are human beings and they are fallible like we are. It's only God who is infallible. 
They're human beings. They're fallible. They make mistakes. They don't get it right sometimes too. So we need to pray for them too. We need to pray for them. Whosoever, whosoever ye be that doth rebel against thy commandment and will not hearken unto thy words in all that thou commandest him, he shall be put to death. Only be strong and of a good courage. This be strong and of a good courage this is like the seat of the seven times that we've read it in the same chapter. God knows that challenges will come. God knows that difficult times will come. So he kept telling Joshua, kept telling the people of Israel. The people of Israel kept telling Joshua as well. It, I, Moses himself kept telling Joshua as well. Just be of good courage. Be courageous. Be strong and be of good courage. Be strong and be of good courage. Keep telling yourself that. Cleeton, princess, be strong and be of good courage. Mr. Donna, be strong and be of good courage. Mom Inspire Grizel, be strong and be of good courage. Mom Benny, be strong and be of good courage. Mom Amel, be strong and be of good courage. Mom Jenny, be strong and be of good courage. Mom Lesperance, be strong and be of good courage. Who have I forgotten? Every single one of us. Mom Morin D, be strong and be of good courage. Mom Rivera Wasson, be strong and be of good courage. Who else is there? My bestie, Mr. Calvin Watcher, be strong and be of good courage. Be strong and be of good courage. Be strong and be of good courage. Mom Amel Noning, be strong and be of good courage. Mom Benis Emambo, be strong and be of good courage. Just be strong and be of good courage. The Lord is with thee. He will never leave thee nor forsake thee. As he had been with our fathers, he will be with us till the end. Let's only study his word, meditate on it day and night, and not depart from it, and trust in the word and do it. Then we shall prosper. Let's be God conscious, not activity conscious. Let's be God pleasers, not man pleasers. There are lots of things that people will want you to do. People will desire you to do. And because you don't want to do those things, they'll think you're lazy. They'll think you just don't want to do good things. But I tell you the truth. Sometimes where God is taking you, you need to go through that process. So that when you get there, you'll be able to handle whatever he's going to be releasing to you. Sometimes you don't have to be all soft-hearted with everybody. So God is building you a strong heart. My mom once said to me, my mom in the Lord once said to me, that to get the lion's share, you need the lion's heart. And when God is building the lion's heart in you, it's not chocolate, it's not bonbon. <laughs> you go through things. I mean things. There is a way a king is trained and there is a way a servant is trained. There is a way a normal citizen is trained. They're not the same, are they? They're not. So if you're going to get the lion's share, you need to get the lion's heart. And it's not chocolate. So get ready, people. It has been an exciting time with you on a chapter a day. It has been an exciting book. This is the first chapter of Joshua. And it has been awesome. And today is the first day of the week. It's a Monday thank god i wish you all the very best have a splendid day to those who are just starting their day i wish you all the best to those who are midway i pray that your the rest of your day be awesome and to those of us who are about to sleep i wish you all the best good night sweet dreams and sound sleep and uh may you dream dreams and see visions just like the word of god has said that we would in jesus name Father, we thank you for your word today. Let it be engrafted on the fleshy tables of our hearts. Cause us to be doers of your word and not hearers only. So that we're going to be living a peaceful spread of men. And people are going to see your glory in us and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Thank you, Lord, because you're a faithful Father. There is none like you in all the earth. Take preeminence, but now forevermore. Guide each and every one of us. Bless those who are just waking up. Let you are going out and coming in be blessed. And for those who are still out, they're just like halfway there. there. Lord, I pray you're going to bring them back home safely. And for those who are about to sleep, Lord, I pray that you give them sound sleep and sweet dreams. Visions and ideas that will birth a whole lot of great things in this life if you tarry to come. Thank you, Lord God, because I know you always hear an answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. 
and amen so people tomorrow is going to be joshua chapter 2 i'm waiting for you all get to study beforehand and let's come back right in here and get a swell time together until tomorrow i always get to say i love you so very much but god loves you way, way more get to like share and subscribe don't forget to hit the notification bell so you get all our updates each time we we'll upload a new video or we get to go live and of course don't forget we have the chapter every um we have the audio bible on tiktok right now so if you can access tiktok as easily as possible just look for a chapter a day on tiktok and you're gonna get all the bible lessons on there until tomorrow ciao ciao Mwah.